Hey guys, John here from Titan, and it's another segment of health tips that are gonna benefit you to hopefully get results in what you're trying to do with your figure, your physique, or just being healthy. So let's talk about it. Most of the time, I get two questions. The first question is, and this is a really, really popular one, is John, how do I lose weight? So that's the first one. And that's a really popular one, like I said. The second one is, is how do I gain muscle, okay? So, you know, there's a lot of different things that go into this, from training, therapies, or supplementation, sleeping, but let's talk about one of the most important, and that's your nutrition. So, nutrition is definitely a high priority in your life. What we eat uh, is basically what we are. You know that old saying, what you are what you eat, and that is a true statement. Okay, so let's go further into this. So when we talk about that, we want to look at what we're eating. First, the food sources. And I've had another segment, or you'll probably see it very soon, about how to look for good food sources and how to read labels. Okay? The second one is, is how are you eating, like proportionate-wise? Like, are you doing a macro count? You know, that funny or saying out there, counting macros? Well, macro is a macronutrient. That's what it stands for. And macros are broken down in three different categories. One is protein. The other is carbohydrates. And then we have fats. And we start looking at it. So how do I count macros, John? All right, I know, you know, we have carbohydrates, which carbohydrates come in a number of different forms. It could be uh, simple, you know, carbohydrates like brown sugar or sugar or it could be complex, like rice or potatoes. Um, and then we look at proteins. So our protein sources, we look at beef, we look at poultry, you know, all these different meats out there. That's a good source for protein. There's other protein from different things. I know people are plant-based and stuff like that. That could be a good uh, substitute if that's the way you want to go. Then we look at fats. So fats, where do you get fats from? So you know, some, some oils out there, some good oils out there, avocados, nuts and seeds, you know, stuff like that is good fats. Uh, even fish, uh, that's another good one. The body needs these things for a reason. We need energy because that's what we're doing all day. We're moving, we're trying to, you know, the body was made to move, to do things. So it needs this energy. And we want to break down the proper amount of macronutrients or macros that are going to fulfill your desired result and whatever your goal is. So let's look at it. They're always in percentages usually and those percentages are you know broken down and majority of the people that are trying to lose weight it's like 40 percent proteins, 30 percent uh, carbohydrates um, and at that point you know it can be broken down all different ways. Your fats could be a 25 percent or 30 percent or whatever it may be. I'm just giving you examples here of what to go by. And there's macro calculators out there that you can find online that you just plug in what you're eating per day. You can keep count of these calories. Now, what you know, what is protein? How many calories is that? How many carbohydrates? How much is fats? So we look at that. So the calorie count for protein is four calories per gram of protein. It's also four calories per gram of carbohydrates. Now it goes up to fat, nine calories per gram. So you look at all this, and at that point, you wanna make it simplified. So count your macro. So how many grams of food you are having, and you're breaking down. And usually a label list is on the back or the ingredients, you can do that. Um, if it's like an eight ounce chicken breast or a steak may maybe, you can look that up online and see exactly what it is. And there's some good apps out there too that you can keep track of your food. You'll just have to log it in. Some of those already have everything logged in from KFC chicken to, you know, a, a, an eight ounce grilled chicken breast, okay? And when you start adding different seasonings on it or maybe some sauces, you have to you have to add that in because that's what you're intaking too. So make sure you're getting the breakdown of all that and try to stay away from that. Keep it simple, keep it light seasonings, okay? The fresher the seasonings ingredients, the better it is for your body. Non-processed foods, we wanna stay away from the processed foods. The more processed it is, the worse it is for you, okay? And usually that's longer shelf life for items. So you don't wanna do that. So you also wanna break down, how do I do this? So we look at a total calorie count for males and females. And I'm giving examples because everybody's different. So, but these are the baselines, okay? So we're talking about 
2,000 calories for a female. And we're talking about 2,500 calories for a male. And you wanna break down those calories like I said. So you're breaking down how many grams of protein did you intake? So if it was eight grams, you know, it was 32, uh, 32 calories right there. So you're intaking what you know and you're counting these things. Like I said, you can keep it, keep it simple, keep it easy with an app and make sure you are on point with what you're intaking. Now you can meal prep your food, buy that calorie count, know exactly what it is. You can like, for me, I would, I would make eight 10 ounce uh, filet mignons or steaks. Uh, you can do 10 chicken breasts and they're all the same. You can weigh them out, you know exactly what they are and that's what it is. So you can break it down and make it real simple, real easy. But this is something that get at, it gets asked a lot. So the protein factor. Now, if you're trying to lose weight, you can go low on the protein. If you're trying to gain muscle, you're trying to add more protein in there. You gotta protect the muscle. Because what happens is, is energy comes in your body, carbohydrates, right? And that energy is to move the body, right? To work the body and work the functions of the body. What happens if, let's say, you're sitting on the couch all day? So you're not using a lot of energy. And the excess food that you're intaking out of these things is going to store in the body as fat and the way that you get this fat off, okay? Now, eating a lesser calorie count can help, but it's really burning through that energy and then your, your body has to go to that storage of fat to burn for more energy. So that's really where you get the weight loss effect, okay? And it's pretty simple and pretty easy when you st start thinking about it like that. Okay, well, I have to do more activity that I'm intaking in as far as energy. It's in and out. Now, calories count as far as different foods, if it's good foods or bad foods. Like I said, an eight ounce chicken breast to a quarter pounder with cheese is gonna be a little bit different as far as what you're intaking, calories nutrition wise. So make sure that you're picking good food sources. I can't stress that enough. Um, and a, a calorie deficit, definitely way to go and being uh, or doing more activity to make sure you're burning through those calories. And then you can intake properly your macro count of proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. I'm gonna have more of these segments for you guys. Please let me know if you guys have any questions and I'll be happy to answer them or maybe throw them in the segment for you guys. I really appreciate it. If you have any questions about this or any more of our therapies that we offer that can help you along with this journey, please call or text 727-389-3220 and always check out the website www.tightmedicalcenter.com. I appreciate it guys and stay tuned for more segments like this. Bye. Hello folks, my name is Cass, one of the nurse practitioners at Titan Medical Center. Today I want to speak to you about Hercules Potion. Some of the key ingredients, L-citrulline, L-arginine, these increase vasodilation, help you with the focused pump when you're training and exercising. L-carnitine, which helps fat metabolism, can help you lose weight. In addition to that, it has glutamine, proline, lysine, which also help with recovery, antioxidants, decreased muscle soreness. It also has NAC, taurine, and ornithine. These all help with making your workouts longer and more productive, and also anti-aging properties as well. So I wanted to talk about collateral circulation pertaining mostly to the heart. So the heart is fed blood through vessels. Now when there is a blockage, it's called a heart attack or an occlusion. So if this were to happen, blood cannot be sent to the heart and the tissue can be damaged. However, we have something called collateral circulation, which are micro vessels that can feed the heart and supply some oxygen and blood to the heart, which can buy you time potentially to get to the hospital and get help from a doctor. Can we make it better? 
Can we improve it, make it stronger? The answer is research shows you can. This is achieved by training to failure, heavy exercise. And with using a product like Hercules Potion, you can train harder and potentially improve your collateral circulation and possibly develop new ones. So not only can Hercules Potion help you look good, feel good, and train strong, but you can also potentially help yourself later on in life if you were to have a heart attack. If you're interested in learning more about Hercules Potion and other Titan Medical Center therapies, please give me a call. I would love to hear from you and help you achieve your goals. I can be reached at 727-389-3220. Stay strong and stay healthy. Hey guys, John from Titan here. I wanted to talk to you today about 8CG. Get a lot of questions about 8CG. Get a lot of questions like, hey, is it good for weight loss? Can it help me with fertility issues? The answer is yes to both. Um, we use it for a couple different things here at Titan Medical Center. Our doctors and providers have different protocols and regimens for different type of people doing different type of things. Um, HCG is mainly used for fertility, okay, um, as far as FDA approval and stuff like that. It's not really approved for weight loss. Um, there's a lot of research and a lot of doctors out there that use it for weight loss portions and you sign off on an off-label use. Um, we use it for add back therapy here to patients that are on testosterone replacement therapy. We want to make sure the testicles don't go through shrinkage and don't get low semen production. The way the HCG does work is, is that it mimics the LH, the luteinizing hormone. Um, it mimics that and basically it produces the signal that goes down into a male into their testes and helps them produce more testosterone naturally. Um, for women, HCG, high levels of HCG are usually common in pregnant women. Usually they test an HCG qualitative and quantitative and if those levels are high or at a certain point they can tell how long the woman's been pregnant and if she is pregnant for sure. So when they do that at home test and they pee on the stick and at that point it comes back, oh we're, you know, we're pregnant, then they go to a doctor and get a real blood test and at that point the doctor can confirm at that point if that's truly what is happening. ATG for a diet portion, a lot of doctors go with a 500 calorie restricted diet. With us here at Titan, it's a little bit different. Our doctors have a different protocol as far as that goes. Um, it could be a calorie restriction and a different dosage that you usually see on the internet. Um, a lot of different myths, like don't work out on HCG, don't eat fruit, such and such. Um, it's kind of false as far as our patients go and what our doctors have seen. Um, Everybody has their own opinion as far as providers and doctors. Uh, ACG is a pro-hormone that stimulates other hormones in the body that actually keep the body in more of an anabolic effect than a catabolic effect when you're eating those calorie restricted days. Um, what happens is, is basically it stimulates those hormones and your hormones are, are taking in, you're being able to lose the weight. Now ACG itself does not make you lose weight. It's actual diet that makes you lose the weight. But the HCG injections can change how you do lose the weight. They usually come from the stomach area and people usually lose pounds like that. If you go on a, a calorie restricted diet, obviously you think that your muscles are gonna break down and go into a catabolic state. Like I said with HCG, that's not the case. It will keep you in an anabolic state in your body to a certain extent. It will help you keep your muscle, retain the muscle, and lose fat in those areas. So that way you can fit in those, those clothes that you want, you want that perfect outfit, you want to keep that muscle and not look all skinny and weak, ACG is definitely the way to go. So if you have any questions, concerns, give us a call, 727-389-3220, or visit us on the net at titanmedicalcenter.com.
swab too, just to show you we're not, we're not going to be positive for COVID-19. And then after the five days came back and we were positive for COVID-19, I'm like, damn, man, I cannot believe this. You know, first thing is, is, you know, we live with my dad. Um, you know, my dad's retired. We retired my dad. He lives with me. I take care of him fully. I've done for years. Uh, and at that point, I'm really, really, really worried about him. I'm worried about our 11-year-old son because, you know, me and her are pretty young. I'm like, we'll probably get through this all right. But my dad's high risk. He, you know, he's in, you know, kidney failure, uh, cardiovascular disease. Uh, you know, Diabetes. So he's got all these different things. Underlying mm. health risk, higher and age. And he's went out of his way. Right. To like quarantine, to quarantine, bunker down. Home not go anywhere yeah. so like you know how terrible would it be that we bring home COVID-19 right. to someone that went out of their way to not get it so the next thing was we we're like listen we're positive we need to isolate immediately that's so the right thing to that's do. that's the right thing to do don't be going to work don't be going out don't be playing around even if you're asymptomatic like me it doesn't matter right I want to do the right thing but the next thing was we're like we got to swab our son and my dad so we swabbed them both Right, we wait for the results to come back in four or five days later, and you know what? Couldn't my, believe it. My dad's negative, my son is positive, <clears throat> and they're in the house where we've been isolated for five days. What do we do? Rush home, we grab our son, take our son out. <clears throat> it's been five days since then, so we want to swab my dad again just to make sure. Let a couple of days go by, I've been asking him, hey, you're symptomatic, you have any symptoms or anything like that? No, I feel all right. Swabbed him for the second time, he got another negative. We were isolated, thank God, and he didn't catch COVID-19 from us because I would have felt real bad or it could have been terminal for him. So that was really, really big. So we're isolated. We've been in this isolation for almost two weeks. Sharice is just starting to get over COVID-19. You know, at that point, we're through our isolation period and, you know, she's got all this other you know, things that are happening to her, swelling of her legs, still not breathing correctly because of the patches in her lungs from the pneumonia. You know, after COVID-19 is gone, it really might not be gone, the effects, because it can leave scarring in the lungs like she might have because of these patches and pneumonia. It could cause a swelling or this cytostorm, which is inflammation in the body. You guys, I'm telling you. Which causes a whole bunch of different things. And this is where organs start shutting down and all these different things start happening negatively. All right, so we have been through the ringer of COVID-19. And like I said, I'm asymptomatic. She got hit the hardest. Our son pretty much, he, he didn't have any symptoms. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, he did pretty well with COVID-19. So, I mean, yeah, the younger guys might do well. We don't know if they can spread it. We do know asymptomatic people, I don't care what they say, can probably spread it. Like micro spit or if I sneeze, because I, I mean, I sneezed, you know, at that point, like you can still spread it that way. Um, so we want to present the facts to you guys about what has really went on and what we've actually used too. So obviously having tight medical center, we have a ton of different therapies that we offer, especially for immune support and immune system boosting. You know, thymosin alpha one, we all got on thymosin alpha one, which has, you know, increased, increases T cells in the body, which track down viral and bacterial cells in the body and try to eradicate them and, and get healthy cells back in there. Glutathione, super antioxidants. We know that Vitamin C and zinc are used in the hospitals too, as well. Because when Teresa was in there, when they when they released her with their paperwork, it started saying take zinc. They gave it to me in the hospital. So at that point, IVs, you know, rehydrating, making sure you're hydrated because you don't want to go through dehydration too, as well through this, and that happens, and that's happened a lot. Um, you know, with with Sharice, because of these different issues, lactic acidosis. That means that your body's producing so much acid, and it cannot get rid of this acid um, naturally. So you have to do stuff for that, which is more water, more hydration. <coughs> Um, it's, it's been a, it's been a definitely a journey, a negative journey. I'm definitely lucky that, uh, that I have been asymptomatic to take care of her I don't know um, what done and my him. son, because if I was bedridden, just like her, I, we would probably, be in a, we'd probably be in a, a bad circumstance, you know? So at You're that bad. point, I, you know, I'm blessed for that. I hope, you know, God blesses her and she's through this very soon because um, she's still not over it. So at that point, she's still going through the ringer of this different things. And she was in the ICU. Uh, they pumped her full of tons of IV antibiotics, um, hydrating her, taking her blood every couple hours, poking her in the middle of the night. Well, you know, I ended up like with that. sepsis because of whatever happened beforehand. I don't know if it was the bladder infection. What I think happened is just it just went like a boom, 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 boom. It was like a domino effect. You know, I had this bladder infection that was resistant to antibiotics. They put me on antibiotics, these like heavy duty and antibiotics. And then I came in contact, obviously, with somebody that had COVID-19. 
COVID-19 and pneumonia took over at that point. And now I'm trying to fight the sepsis and the pneumonia that's still there. And you know what? I'll like, I'm going to show you guys like, cause I'm telling you guys, this is serious, you know? And like, you know, I still have swelling in my stomach. This is my stomach right now. You know? Anybody knows that Sharice, Sharice is very, I'm, very flat you know, stomach and very in this shape. Is not, this is not fun, you so, know? It's not. It's not fun. You know, my legs are so swollen. Um, you know, it's hard for me to breathe. And, you know, it doesn't feel good. I've, I, I, these random symptoms of, like, waking up in the middle of the night and just having these Charlie horses in my legs and literally, like, crying because I'm in so much pain and I, there's nothing I can do. Like I, I, they, and they don't know what, that like what to do. It's so like I'm sitting in a hospital bed, and the doctors are coming in, and I think they feel so bad about not having like an answer for you about COVID, and what's going to happen to you, you know? Because they don't have those answers. They're, I'm like, you know, uh, they're what, flying by the seat of their pants. They, they're, and they say it too. They really are. They, they're they're being, they understand I mean, that. They're right? being honest about it, but like. When you're in the medical field, you know, you don't want to tell somebody, I don't know. And they have to tell me that. They came in and they're like, I don't know. You know, I don't know what's causing what. And I don't know how long these symptoms are going to last. And, you know, I'm asking them because I don't like getting shooting pains up into my eyes. Like, I'm still getting it. You know, they have me on medication right now just so that my eyes will stay focused and I don't get these little zings in my eyes where my eyes like shake like this, almost, yeah. you know, it's like, it's scary. Cause what, well, well, you can't see, you know? So yeah. I'm still at the point where, you know, I can't even like lay flat because I can't breathe. It's, it's like, yeah. it's scary. It's, it's a scary thing. And I feel like for a long time, people are just saying, you know, it's just a flu. It's just this, it's just that. But until, like, I guess, I I mean, I got to be the super lucky one to go through it, and I'm still going through it, and I'm hoping that I can get better because I feel like every day is just kind of like a stagnant day for me. So, you know, it, it sucks. And then on top of all of that, guys, now you have, like, these COVID units of when you get admitted to the hospital, right? So when you go to the hospital, like, for instance, I've been to the hospital a million times with John. And it's usually for my endometriosis. And I have to make sure that I watch it very closely because God forbid something blows up in there and boom, I have ovary blow up. And then, oh, now I'm, you know, in emergency surgery, surgery for hysterectomy which I don't that, want, yeah. you know. So I've been in the hospital, but he's always been by my side. I've never been in a hospital by myself. But in these COVID units, they don't allow anybody in there. Oh, no. No like, matter no. what, you're not allowed in the hospital. No. You're not allowed in the ER. No. You're not allowed to stay in the ER. No. It doesn't matter if you have COVID or not. <clears throat> you're out. No. If they do find out you had COVID, they're going to treat you a little bit different. Like like this almost. Like, oh. No, you're... I'll tell you. So, like, you know, I I don't. I, I It took me It took me 20 days to go to the emergency room. And the only reason I went to the emergency room is because I woke up at 5 a.m. and I couldn't move my legs. And I told her she's going. That's I couldn't move my legs. I, I, couldn't, I couldn't feel my feet because my feet were numb. So if I can't move my legs and my feet are numb, I probably should go to the ER, okay? So I, I caved, went to the ER. It's not where I wanted to go. And literally, when I went in there to sign the paper, sign the paper, like, oh, you're going to sign in? And it's like, okay, so you can leave. And I'm like, <clears throat> what do you mean? I'm like, he has to come in there with me. Like, no. I'm like, what do you mean? I have to go in there by myself? Like, what do you, by myself, like now? it's the scariest thing so not only am i sick and i'm by myself and i have to be like you know i'm not even with the program because i'm so sick that i don't even like know what people are even telling me at this point it's it's like the scariest thing like being by yourself you don't even know what's going to happen next you don't know what's going to happen to you in the hospital you don't know what's going on you have no support there you know except for the people that are in there and i mean i thank god that i had a really 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 good team at advent and i'm going to give them a shout out you know because they took really good care of me but it's not the point like still by yourself and then after that they admit me to icu on the floor with covid unit okay and they like, you know, they put you in this room and it's like this aired out room, you know, the it sounds like yeah. there's a hurricane. Shh. 
the whole time. Fresh air of it all mm. through there. It's crazy. And, uh, you know, you're by yourself, <clears throat> which is fun. And, um, you know, when they come in there, it's like I had the one doctor come in there and I'm in my own room, right? Because I'm like I'm in a hospital bed hooked up. I have like three IVs in one arm because they're pumping me with antibiotics at this point because of the sepsis or whatever it is. And, um, you know, they just they come in there. He's like, where's your mask? I'm like, it's literally sitting on the bed like next to me. I'm like right here. And he's like, well, put it on. I'm like, OK, well, hold up. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm like, I'm in my own hospital bed. Like, like, I will happily put on my mask. Like, I don't want to get nobody sick. I don't want anybody else to get sick. I don't want anybody to go through what I have been through. Like, I think some of some people out there think either A, it's a joke. B, it's political. C, it's made up. D, it's a, another influenza. Let me tell you something, okay? I have had pneumonia. It ain't pneumonia. I have had the flu. It ain't the flu. This is like some off the wall. You don't know what's going to happen. It's hit or miss. If it hits you, hey, you might just be that guy. Like, John, walk around. Just have no symptoms. Everything's fine. Totally cool. But you're spreading it around town, okay? That's your person number one. Person number two, you get sick, get sick for a couple days. Oh, boo-hoo, have some diarrhea. You might have a headache for two, three days. You get over kind it. Cough, little way. little tiny cough here or there. Yeah. No medications needed, nothing, whatever. Oh, then you got patient number three. That's the unlucky one like me. I'm going on dexamethasone. I went on hydroxychloroquine. I took it. I didn't care. I, at that point, what what... What did I have to lose at that point? You really want to check with your medical provider on this? <laughs> a lot of primary cares and, 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 and what your, did I have to lose? I took it. Trial, I yeah. took it. I took I took the I took the Z pack. I took the hydroxychloroquine. I had to take the dexamethasone because if I didn't take the dexamethasone, and that is like a pretty serious drug because coming off of it was not nice. But I mean, if I didn't take it, then you have to control the inflammation. Like that's the key to this whole thing is yeah, the inflammation. inflammation and the inflammation is bad and it gets and it's everywhere. It's in your in your scalp. I mean, I had fluid everywhere. that I could move in my scalp around in my scalp. It is like the scariest thing I've ever been through in my whole life. And we got to remember, guys, now COVID-19 also attacks the nervous system, the central nervous system. I was having involuntary movements so of my hands. Not just that. And feet. With the vision as one like she's talking about. <sighs> people are losing their sense of smell.